So before we go to questions, and thanks very much, Lillian, I just introduced Martin McKee, who is the founder of EcoHost and a professor of public health here at the London School, and he will host the Q&A for this session. Okay, thank you very much. Could I just ask all of the speakers maybe to come over here so that we can, the uh, people who are watching us online uh, can, uh, can see you. And uh, we've only got about 15 minutes for questions, so we're going to have to be relatively brief. So if anybody thinks that they want to give a presentation, uh, sign up for the next one of these. Don't do it now. Uh, we want short questions of no more than 140 characters. <laughs> but meanwhile, let's start and see if we get any questions from online. If not, we'll take a couple of questions at once, and then we'll put them to the panel. Who would like to start? And just wave at me. So gentlemen here, gentlemen here, and we've got three three men over here. Uh, there must be a few women in the audience as well. But we'll start here. Uh, please, sir. Thank you. And if everyone could just say who they are as well. Yeah, M my name is Ali. I'm from UNRWA. You know, one important challenge facing us, all the humanitarian agencies on the ground, is the coordination between them and the coordination with host countries and the coordination with other agencies. Uh, uh, because the, in many instances, the, the NCD patient is, is going to MSF, coming to UNRWA, taking medication, and going to the Jordanian Ministry of Health clinics to take medication. He ends up with different protocols of management. He, he ends up with different uh, regime of treatment. Uh, another issue is the priority agenda. Each, each, each uh, humanitarian organization has different agenda of work. And uh, just to give an example, in, 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 in such humanitarian uh, situation, many, many of the, the humanitarian agents, they focus on, they come to work on gender-based violence while the priority of the, the community, the priority of the refugees are to get food and to get shelter. Mm. Okay, great. Gentlemen there. And then if you pass the microphone back there. Yeah, my name is uh, Kweku, and I work with uh, International Medical Corps UK. Um, a couple of questions, uh, one to uh, Helen, and uh, one to, is it Kieran? Yeah. Uh, so for, for Helen, um, did you see any, or did you look at the comparison between the funding for HIV and for NCDs? Bear in mind that, of course, HIV over the years have managed to define a very, very well-defined package, okay? And whether, for example, if the NCD group come up with a similar package based on some of the priorities we are talking about, okay? So NCD is quite broad, but especially within the humanitarian settings, if they can define or if there's a definition of what NCDs to target or prioritize in certain contexts, would that help with the funding situation with uh, as versus let's say HIV, which already has got a very clear uh, defined package. For, for Kieran, keep the questions quite short. Yeah, uh, for for Kieran, uh, South Sudan, um, uh, I will. You you mentioned you you see children with uh, uh, diabetes ketoacidosis, which prompted you to take into account. Can you give us the let's say the proportion of those, and what other NCDs? you are seeing, but you are ignoring still, uh, if that is still the case. Um, okay, so it's a question about the burden of disease in South Sudan for Kieran. Yeah, yeah. Uh, versus uh, other NCDs, because yeah. he touched on, uh, I think, type 1 diabetes in children, Great. I think. And Great. then you, your, I think your last point, you mentioned about guidelines, that MSF is developing guidelines for NCDs. Is this in, uh, is this in collaboration with other groups like your WHO or UN? Uh, UNHCR, uh, there's a group already trying to look at this. Is it in collaboration with, with those groups or is something very specific to uh, MSF? Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Gentlemen over here, and then if other people can wave at me for the second round of questions, please. Uh, hi, thanks. Uh, I'm Dr. Juma Khodonozarov, and I'm representing Help Page International. My question to Ellen. Um, it was a wonderful presentation. Thanks for that. And I think uh, a lot to learn from that presentation. Uh, I think you're well connected the, the in terms of uh, sustainability, peer involvement, uh, in terms of fixed dose combination, use gene expert, all of this make perfectly sense. Um, did you ever thought about addressing nutrition issue for those people? Or is that was big problem? That's my question. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So a couple of questions, and maybe rather than uh, there are some individual ones, but let's try and broaden it out a little bit. This issue of coordination 
uh, first of all, coordination and also the issue of prioritization. Whose priorities? The um, development assistance organization, the community. Reflections on, on that. Um, who would like to start off on that? Here and maybe. Or Pablo. Pablo. Ah, yeah. And Hello. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's why we are here. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that that's one of the key things. I mean, we've been talking to each other and, 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 and we feel that there is a need of a better coordination, in particular, I mean, guidelines and uh, I mean, there are different groups working. I think that is happening, but it's happening uh, maybe too late. Um, at, uh, and, and that's part of the objective of this of this event. And, and uh, hopefully, and that's uh, our aim, is it's not just to do a symposium and, and forget about this, but from, from today, I mean, find ways to work um, uh, in a better way and keep this communication. I don't know if, uh, Slim, you have anything to say about the global coordination of, of, of the different agencies in the region, because I think WHO, of course, has a, a key role on this, and I know you are working on that. So I don't know if... Uh, well, let me push you on that, Pablo, because you, you, know, you, you have another hat that you wear as well, and one of the other ones, that, uh, the World Heart Federation, and then somebody also mentioned the Diabetes Community, the International Diabetes Federation, for example. To what extent are they getting engaged in this agenda? Well, and maybe I Helen, think you would like I to think comment on that. I think, I think, well, I WHF think, isn't the well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm also, I work at the World Heart Federation, and that's basically a federation of all uh, cardiovascular societies, and well, they, we have some cardiologists like Ami there, but I think the cardiologists are really, I mean, far away from, from, from this discussion. Uh, uh, and prior to that, we just came from the European Congress of Cardiology, 35,000 people. I don't think there was any, any, any presentation on these kind of topics, and, and they're discussing the latest, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, stent uh, and things for, I mean, uh, and, and they're neglecting this issue. I mean, that, that's what I think. I, I think we, we eventually need to work with them, but um, I, think, I think they're far away. I don't know. That, that's my, my feeling. Helen? Um. Yeah, I mean, it, it, co the, the issue of coordination comes up time and time again in the HIV world as well. Um, I think I think it has to come from that international level to the Ministry of Health level. I mean, what we're still constantly seeing is different NGOs still reinventing the wheel and lack of leadership by ministries of health um, to bring those uh, agencies together. And that's not to stifle innovation, but to make sure the the basic is clear agreement on what the basics should be and how those basics should be implemented. And I think that's where um, really in many of these countries in very, very difficult settings is how can we work with those ministries of health to, to, uh, to bring some of these agencies together. Maybe I could ask Kieran to pick up on that one because I was struck listening to your presentation that it was actually remarkably similar to ones that Pablo and I gave in Rome at the weekend at the European Society of Cardiology, except we used the word uh, the words cardiovascular disease and you used the words HIV. And in fact, we were saying exactly the same thing. So can MSF do something? I mean, you've got this tremendous convening power and ability. Everybody likes you and listens to you. And, <laughs> um, well, I, I'm, I'm a bit nervous to answer that because... There's actually, I, I can see there's a current and former president of MSF in the room, and uh, I don't want to say anything wrong. Um, in, in terms of collaboration, coordination, it's true that we see our primary partnership generally with, uh, as being with the community and the ministries of health in the countries we work. And in the past, we have sometimes been reticent about uh, seeing opportunities in partnerships with, um, with other actors, international actors, UN actors, and so forth. Um, I think that working in NCDs, it, it, it forces us to look uh, look more broadly uh, it forces us to some in to some extent think about health system issues where we've been a little bit cautious in the past uh, because of our emergency mindset i know that philippa for example sits on uh, groups with unhcr with or at least participates in discussions with slim's group as well so i think that we are starting uh, to coordinate on that that issue I, um civil society uh, we well, I think um, NCD Alliance didn't make it in the end, so we do need to try and activate the activists a bit more. Um, but I, you know, at the same time, in this room, as Pablo said, we've, we we have uh, 
uh, humanitarian actors, we have uh, um, academics, UN agencies, and I think this is also a, a move in that direction. M maybe just to say about the guidelines in response to Kweku's question, um, the, the actual remit here was quite modest. Uh, it was to provide guidance to MSF field teams uh, who, who actually had asked for this. And I think it was Tamam who actually did a survey across all MSF projects and found that this was something that was universally requested. Um, given that uh, national guideline, guidelines where available uh, seemed not to be uh, uh, m implementable in these situations or where there were WHO pen guidelines they were too long to be read. So simplified guidance for NCD management in emergency settings was a very much a grassroots need within MSF. Now we are actually sharing those guidelines and starting to discuss with, uh, with, with other actors about uh, improving these guidelines and making them a little bit more generalizable. But even in relatively resource deprived situations now people do have access to uh, mobile phones and things like that. So presumably these guidelines are now all in the form of apps, yes? <laughs> well, very soon. I'm not actually great with <laughs> technology. I think uh, I know there's someone in the audience who's been sending me WhatsApp messages to tell me to s stop speaking. And fin um, uh, but, uh, um, uh, yeah, MSF guidelines are starting to be available as apps. Um, this, this NCD guideline is, is, a, is a draft, and so that would be a okay. possibility. Well, we have Google just up the road from us here. Can, can, anybody Martin, else has any links to any philanthropic organizations? Martin, can, I, can I just I mean, follow up with your question, WHF? Because actually what I think is the role of cardiologists is to t stay away, basically. I mean, and, 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 and that's, an, I mean, stay away and not interfere. I mean, I don't think, I mean, the solution for NCDs is not, I mean, specialists. I mean, and, and, and that's part of the challenge because we need, I mean, the, the, unlike HIV work, I mean, most of the specialists, I mean, eventually were in, 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 uh, in, in those settings. We are, ca we are coming from, with specialists that come from high income countries and we cannot make those models applicable in, in, in these settings. And I think that's part of the challenge. We need to rethink that. And what we need is if, we, as, as, as you've seen, for example, in, in Lebanon, if, if um, uh, patients come with the latest, I don't know, antihypertensive, but actually we know that the, the important thing is to just lower blood pressure. Yeah. At least we want the cardiologist saying that's fine and not saying, no, you need the latest uh, version and, and the most expensive. So I don't think we need a specialist to, to, to solve this, but at least not to interfere in the solution. Yeah, and maybe at, <laughs> later, maybe at a later stage today, because I know others like David Barron and others are speaking, we might talk about what we're trying to achieve, what level of blood pressure, what level of HbA1c, what level of whatever, which is another issue. So, um, uh, Lillian, um, you haven't spoken yet, so any thoughts on this issue of coordination from your perspective and prioritization? Yeah, um, I think the NCDs in crisis group that UNHCR convenes, uh, I think we started uh, last year, and we've been having a series of meetings trying to um, uh, to be on the same page in terms of treatment guidelines, in terms of uh, how we manage NCDs in humanitarian crisis, and it includes a lot of the agencies that work in these settings. And one of the things we've uh, come up with is uh, trying to come up with a misplike uh, document, like a minimum in in initial service package similar to the reproductive health one, um, that will be used as a guidance um, for programs that we all work in. So I think that's a good first step. Okay, great, thanks, Helen. There was a question for you about nutrition. Oh, yes. Um, so in answer to your question, yes, um, we do think about nutrition. I mean, I think the it, now in the age of antiretroviral therapy, um, you know, if th these patients are assessed, if they fit into the, you know, the, the standard nutrition uh, recommendations for a nutrition intervention, they're very much um, uh, treated according to the country nation country's national guidelines. There's not a specific protocol because they're HIV positive. So, and definitely within the health education, and that's where, again, where I see this overlap with a uh, non-communicable disease in terms of healthy lifestyle, healthy diet, all that stuff, again, should be integrated into the packet of patient education, yeah. Anybody here from the pharmaceutical industry? <laughs> okay. Well, in their absence, because one of the things that was coming through a number of the presentations <laughs> was... Yeah. yeah, they may be watching. <laughs> Anybody online from the pharmaceutical industry? Anybody want to admit it? Uh, this issue of, of medicines, uh, you were talking about fixed dose combination therapy for HIV. That's certainly been talked about for cardiovascular disease, the simplification of the procurement. Many of us know that 
classic slide of the uh, pharmaceutical procurement in Kenya, which looks like an integrated circuit board, uh, and uh, the problems with stockouts that were mentioned in a number of the presentations. So are we all coming together in a coordinated way to address this? Because it seems to me that these are practical solutions that would actually address some of the issues you're talking about. Who's doing that? Who's in charge? Who's leading the, the battle? MSF, I mean, you've been talking about it. <laughs> w We're looking at WHO, okay, I so think. WHO. Yeah, yeah so uh, WHO, shall we... Um, I mean, how about getting the um, fixed dose combination therapy for well, hypertension I mean, on the essential be drugs before, list? Before, so, I mean, that, that's something that actually I, I should have mentioned. The World Health Federation is leading. We put, we put together a, a group uh, on, on, on the poly pill that actually Philippa uh, participated in representing MSF, um, and, and, and we are looking at that kind of thing. I mean, how, we, how, how, no, I mean, and we are working with WHO, with the, uh, with the people in Geneva, to, uh, to put the poly pill uh, for secondary prevention in the list in of the essential list. medicine. So there is a group, and WHO is part of, the, of that group with uh, regulators and also pharma companies. Great. Anything you'd like to add? Yeah, just to complement to that, uh, um, uh, there has been already a proposal uh, for the uh, adjunction of uh, fixed dose uh, combination therapy for secondary prevention that had been rejected last year um, to, be added, to be added actually to the essential model list of WHO. And we are reconsidering now again, there is a new proposal probably in preparation for the next round. Um, so this is something that is already, I mean, had been, had been discussed. Um, the committee, when they reviewed, I mean, the proposal thought that they had not enough backing of evidence actually to support this. Uh, this has been, I mean, a controversial discussion that we had, I mean, this year again. <coughs> but clearly in the coming years, the fixed dose combination will come again. If I may, just a one point about the coordination aspect. I think it's an important uh, element, and sometimes we tend also to mix up everything. In emergency response situation, and I have colleagues also from WHO, emergency department that might mean, people have a poor understanding of how also the response is mounted in support to member states. Uh, the member states are there when they can't actually uh, cope. I mean, they, there is an international community that support them. There is a global health cluster. We work in clusters, and the health cluster lead is often WHO. When you have refugee situation, like in neighboring countries, the UNHCR are leading. And this is how actually things are organized most of the time, whether through Ministry of Health, mainstreaming, I mean, the services through them and the response, but also through implementing partners. Having that understanding, I think it's crucial to understand who is doing what where, which is one of the uh, aspects that we are doing in the early response of an emergency is to map out who are the actors and stakeholders who should be involved. So I think the coordination, of course, I mean, the UN agencies most of the time do it, but of course you have additional actors like MSF that uh, work independently and w provide actually a lot of support to member states as well that we need to in put in the equation. So I think having the understanding of the mode of operation of emergency response is key also, because sometimes we tend to give a lot of criticism of what is happening in coordination, but I think uh, to get things right, we need to understand who is operating, and sometimes how also the member state themselves mm -hmm. decide. In Turkey, yeah. they have decided mainly to themselves provide the support, sure. and not calling for international agency, mm -hmm. I mean, as much as other countries. So I think this is a crucial difference to take into And of course, these things always get caught up in geopolitics. So uh, the key message from that is that everybody should be talking to one another, which is rather good because we're almost time for lunch, which will be mm -hmm. a great opportunity. And if you haven't met other people sitting around you, you will, of course, find the opportunity to see uh, how you can collaborate with them, not only over lunch, but later in the day. But before you break, we do clo close this session with thanking all of our speakers, of course, but then a final short um, video, which we're about to have. But anyway, thank you to all the speakers. All <laughs>